Welcome to This Is My Architecture. We are here in Tel Aviv, Israel. I'm Benjamin from AWS, and today I'm joined by Dro from Sunday Sky. Hi, Dro. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, Dro, before we get started, tell us a little bit about what Sunday Sky does. Sunday Sky created the Smart Video Marketing Cloud. It allows our customers to generate real-time videos using data and deliver them to the right audience at the right time completely transforming the way they do customer relations. Okay, so I heard video and I heard real time and I know that video tends to be very compute and storage intensive. Um, are you guys running all in on AWS? All in. So uh, I imagine all of that combined translate into a substantial AWS footprint. Um, what kind of footprint are we talking about in terms of scale? So all of our environment is auto scaling. Okay. Um, and uh, again, for cost purposes, and at peak, we can have cases where we have thousands of servers. Okay, so large substantial footprint. Um, I heard auto scaling. So I know that when you look at a cost for an environment like that, you will see spikes and it will, it will ebb and flow and that's normal. So um, I know that you guys ran into an issue of, of controlling and understanding your, your cost. Um, tell, us, tell us how this came about. So, to begin with, we started using Cost Explorer and other tools to, uh, to try and identify the cost structure that we have and, uh, and the patterns of our cost. Um, to help with that, we tagged all of our resources using cost-specific tags. Um, what we found is that at times, due to uh, product bugs or misuse, human errors, or any other uh, reason, you would see an increase in cost that is unwarranted. Okay. And what we needed was to identify these fast enough so that we can drop it and control the cost again. Okay, so I, I've heard these types of concerns from a lot of customers. I would say all of the customers. Yep. The first part of it comes with, you can't really make any uh, intelligent decisions before everything is tagged. And I believe you, you, you found the same. So how are you making sure that uh, every one of your resources is tagged, that everybody is complying? So the first thing you have to do is make the entire company cost aware. Right. Um, all of the engineering and professional services and DevOps, uh, they are all aware of our cost and they tag everything. To make sure that this happens, we have a specific Lambda that was created that checks all the AWS resources all the time and make sure that they are compliant with our tag uh, uh, policies. Okay, so periodic Lambda function, scanning all of your resources, finds one that isn't tagged based on what you've decided should be the tagging format, right. immediately sends an alert. Correct. So on top of all of that, you developed another mechanism and I think I've heard the same concern from other customers which is, um, how do I know that some usage was, was put into our footprint that we would like to know about. How do we know about it quickly? Mm -hmm. So what did you build in order to do that? Or first of all, tell us, how did this come about? So again, all of our employees are cost aware. Okay. Um, every four to six months, we have uh, a dev jam at Sunday Sky, a hackathon, uh, where every person that wants to join is, is joining. We have 24 hours of jamming. Um, and in this particular Dev Jam, we had a group of R&D uh, engineers together with DevOps engineers and actually the AWS uh, team, our TAM as an example, uh, um, trying to solve that particular problem. Okay. What they did over a 24 hour period is they took the CUR file that is coming to S3 by Amazon and triggered a Lambda function uh, using this file and pushed this data into a Redshift table. Okay. okay. Just pushing it in. So this is the cost and usage reports that we create. Correct. Um, that gets dropped into your S3 bucket, I believe several times a day. Mm -hmm. You're using that as, as, as a trigger to go in, pick it up using a Lambda function that you've written and then push that data after some analysis into Redshift. Without analysis first, okay. just the data itself. Raw data. Right. Okay. And then we created another component that's called the cost anomaly detector, okay, that reads from this data, from this redshift table, does the fancy thing, the algorithm that looks at past usage patterns and analyzing whether there's a spiking cost or not for different filters and writes that data 
that analyzed data into a different redshift table. Okay. How far back are you looking? We are looking at a two-week uh, window. The reason we're looking at two weeks is that there is a, an ebb and flow pattern to the usage. Um, weekends, weekdays, days and nights. So you have to take that into account. And in order to identify the right, the proper uh, usage pattern, you have to look at least two weeks back. Okay, so two weeks is right for your types of workloads. Correct. The, the cyclical nature of them manifest within a two-week period. And so what are you comparing to that two weeks to know, oh, something just happened, which I would like to know about? So we're comparing the distribution of the last two weeks, the, the mean, the uh, deviation, and we're comparing that to what happened two days ago. Okay. The reason we're looking two days ago is that the CUR, CUR data that's coming from Amazon has a built-in delay. Uh, if you look at yesterday, it's not entirely accurate. Okay, so it could be up to 48 hours for Correct. it to be completely accurate and then useful for you to do that comparison two weeks. Before that, it's just not accurate enough. Okay, Correct. so the logic for doing that, that's running here. Yes. And so it is def it's finding that anomaly and then what is it doing with that? So it's writing the anomaly into a different table in Redshift. And then we are using Splunk as a, uh, as a tool for Sunday Sky for different purposes. What we've done is we created a dashboard on Splunk and a, an alert based on Splunk searches that is reading directly from this table. Okay. And if Splunk identifies an anomaly in the Redshift table, it will alert uh, the, the relevant people. Um, and then it will initiate some action. At that point, somebody needs to go and investigate and see, is this a false positive or is this a valid uh, reason for concern? Somebody spun something up, we need to shut it down. Correct. So you find that within around two days. Yes. Um, how long was it taking you to find something like that before you had this system in place? So before that, it was, to be honest, sporadic. We, we try to go into Cost Explorer at least once, once a week, uh, but there's no one person that does that as part of, of, of his job or her job. Um, so it tends to be a week but in some cases it could be longer than that. Okay, so, so this is sort of um, giving you comfort that within a two-day period, you're, going, you're probably going to find um, any kind of abnormal change in your usage. Um, to, to your estimate, how much has this saved you? Um, so far, tens of thousands of dollars. We had uh, cases where uh, this tool identified a um, a bug that one of the developers pushed into, uh, into our code, um, a file that was pushed into uh, S3, um, triggered a, a lambda that made the change to the file, uh, wrote it again, that triggered an infinite loop. And uh, within a couple of days, the cost spiked to about $10,000. Okay. Um, if we hadn't found it, the cost would go up to maybe $50,000 because it's exponential. Understood. The flip side of that is false positives. Have, right. you, have you had many of them? You definitely have them by design okay. because when your business grows, the cost also goes up. And so an anomaly detector like that could identify a new customer coming in as an anomaly. Okay. So at that point, you need a human to say, this is normal. Right. Um, so this is, this is great. Well, how, much, how much does it cost to run this thing? Is, is that substantial? No, practically nothing. We are already using Redshift and we are already using Splunk. Uh, so the additional cost that we have is just these two lambdas. They're running a couple times a day. Yeah, okay. it's, it's and, very minimal. And, and some, some time of an EC2 instance. Yeah. Um, that, this, is, this is phenomenal. Um, I know that a lot of customers are going to be looking at this and say, oh, we have the exact same problem. Can I have this? So can they? They actually can because uh, what we've done is we open sourced it and uh, the code is readily available for uh, other companies to use. Uh, we created it in a way that the algorithm of uh, identifying anomalies is within the code, but the specifics of the searches that you want to run, the filters on the, on the business line, the components, etc., are done in a configuration file. So you don't have to change the code if uh, your, your tags are different. That's fantastic. That's a really creative way to solve things. And thank you for open sourcing it. I like that very much. Um, thank you, Dwal, for walking us through this. And thank you for watching This Is My Architecture.